Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Coming to you pre-recorded from our internet couch. This is season nine of the Gaming Salute Rift Tracks for June 11, 2016. We're your host, Peacemaker2448. And wrap it up, Slon. And I'm realizing the the way we're going to be bulk recording these, you're going to have fun with the dates before too long. Yep. <laughs> I have to just, like, give me a list of dates that we're going to be recording. <laughs> we're recording for just so I can go, okay, this one, this one, this one, good. I'll just mark these off as necessary so I don't fuck this up. Thank God I've got that listed all on the schedule. Yeah. Uh. So yeah, folks, here we are. Season 9. And I'm just going to outright say this. We're watching a good show. Because... Well, since Glock's not around to do season the season nine he wanted to do, which would have been the Attack on Titan anime, which I think me and him might have seen the entire thing of. And to be honest, I'm like, eh, it was all right. When he brought it on the show the one time, I was like, eh. I remember well, that because I was like, eh. I wasn't there for that episode, so I should probably go back and listen to that. Because I haven't looked, I, I was not for around to the Attack on Titan episode. I believe I was on vacation when y'all recorded that. I'm trying to think. I, I believe I was. Probably. That's about the only reason I ever miss the uh, miss a recording is if I'm on vacation. Yeah, I bet that would have been. Yeah. Because. Yeah. That was the wizard season, so yeah, mm. I have a funny feeling that's what it was. So yeah. Anyway, we're gonna be watching. Weirdly enough, the thing that started my love for Ryder and got me to spread that love out to other people and get some people to actually watch this franchise, and also weirdly enough, got me back into Tokusatsu. Kind of, because I was a Power Rangers fan way back in the day. So, anyway, we're Boy. watching Kamen Rider Double. Boy, that's what's funny. What? Kamen Rider show got you into it, and a Kamen Rider show's trying to break us at the moment. Yeah, <sighs> spoilers. We're not happy with Ghost. At all. Like, super not happy with Ghost. Like, we spent... What, about 30 minutes before ranting mm -hmm. about the show? That if I had been recording, I probably would have been playing a clip right about now of. Mm -hmm. <sighs> yeah. But look, we're not happy with Ghost. And I am so close to dropping the show because these last three episodes have done dick all and have accentuated the goddamn problems with the show I've always had with Ghost that have always made me not truly love Ghost, but I'm like, I still enjoy it for the most part. It's okay. I'm, I'm enjoying the show. <laughs> it's not one of the best writer shows ever, but I, I can still enjoy it. But, like, ugh. This, this is, no. I, we're spiraling out of control, Ghost, and you can't stop at this point. I don't think you can. Because your problems have always been there. It, it's... Always. It's one of those, I like Ghost until I go to think about it, then I hate it. it yeah. It's just that. Yeah, I've already deleted them off my, my figure words list. They'll be like, no, nah, I ain't picking up the, the U3. Nope. Damn sure ain't picking up Mugen. And if, if, if they never release, if they fucking release Mugen for Tor before Trider on, I will literally fucking have a fit. I will literally rant for an hour on air about that. <laughs> Mark my words. Oh god. <laughs> uh, well, hopefully that'll happen on like a slow tour day. Oh, if, if it fucking does, you're gonna hear me rant for the entire rest of the fucking slow tour stream, just being like, "You motherfuckers! You fucking <laughs> delay Trider on." Again, keep the lane trider on, but you were really fucking Mugen? The fuck? Just, uh, just, yeah, just done, done, fucking done. 
I'll, I'll oh, say that happening. Well, the thing is, they didn't release a release date. They didn't put out a release date for Trider on this pat the, at the Tommy Nations event, where they announced fucking renewal double and gave a release date for it. They fucking gave it a release date for fucking asshole drive, aka Bono. Yeah. We have a release date for fucking Bono. Bono! But he's evil rider. That's the problem! Well, evil not rider. That's still the problem. Do you know how many villains exist in Figure Arts? <laughs> uh, taking the not set numbers very low. Yo, you know, you know what other villains we've got in Drive? What? Heart and Chase. That's it. No brain, no medic, fucking no golden evolution heart, even though that's a fucking repaint. Nope, none of that. Wait. None. That's right, we did get heart. Yeah, we got heart. That's a big heart. Did we. Did everyone not wind up putting two and two together after we got the. Drive Saga stuff? Uh, no, because fucking, uh, what was <laughs> it? We got, like, Phoenix and Medusa from Wizard. We got no Gaim villains if they weren't a rider. Like, we got none of the, uh, the Overlords. And that'd be the only Gaim stuff we would have gotten anyway. But, I mean, you think about it. He's the only one besides Gold Drive, which Gold Drive arguably can be a rider. Yeah. So, he's technically the only non-rider. Yeah. Until the Drive Saga stuff. If that if that if they did that and that was in place, I give props to you because that was announced right at the beginning of Drive. <laughs> I'm kind right of wondering. I'm kind of wondering if they did that that way on purpose so that people wouldn't try to put two and two together. But I, I I'm wondering how long they actually had that in plan. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah. So for season nine, we're making some changes. Unfortunately, we're doing a terrible job of implementing those changes. Well, <laughs> we are kind of breaking five years of doing it the other way. Yeah. Okay. Here's how it's going to break down. First and foremost, we're doing away with the fucking season limit of episodes and needing a certain number of episodes for a season of TGSR. We're throwing that out the window. Essentially, we will do a season of a show, and that'll be a season for us. Or if it's just an entirety of if an entirety of a show, isn't like stupidly long, like some two hundred goddamn long show, we'll we'll be happy to do it on TGSR. Fifty might be our limit, though, per season. Right. But like that will allow us to do something that's like smaller, like the entirety of Build Fighters. If you remember that. Because yep. that's only like 25 episodes. Which, to be honest, if we did Bill Fighters, I would honestly say, fuck it, let's do Bill Fighters and Bill Fighters Try in the same season, since that only accounts to 50 episodes. That would work. Maybe we might as well just roll in, the, roll in both of them, but that's not here nor there. But yeah, they'll allow us to do shorter stuff, longer, like maybe a little bit longer stuff than what we've normally done, but essentially allow us just to do what we want to do. That's it. <laughs> Secondly, for picks, our old, old-fashioned picks where we just watch two episodes of something, we're going to do those whenever we damn well please. I, I we're all... think we're going to at least try to make a conscious effort not to do them back to back. Right. But yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we're essentially just going to do them whenever. We're not going to have a specific amount of old picks we're going to do per season. 
we're just going to do them as we feel like we want to. So if a new show comes out, we've seen the first couple episodes of, and we want to do a Rift Tracks episode on it, we can just immediately get into it. And now I don't have to worry about, oh, let's figure out where we're going to do this. So, like, when the new writer show comes out, we can immediately do a Rift Tracks on, on it. What about the new Sentai show? That, too. <laughs> I had to say it. I had to. That, too. The problem is we're closer to a new writer show than a Sentai show right now. It. And in more of a need of a new writer show than a Sentai show right now. Yeah. Because at least Zooger is doing good. God damn it. Fucking miracle and a half. I need to try to pick it up, but I'm like, I, I don't know. <laughs> it's, it might, like, slack off a little bit at times, but by God, will you at least like the cast and at least enjoy their interactions with each other? And I will tell you this much, this red is the best red we've had since fucking... Hiromu and Daigo. He is not Takaharu. He is not right. He is a good fucking character. <laughs> the only weird thing is he gets a little bit of shit on in the first couple episodes. And I think this is like a cathartic sort of system of like, alright, we're, we're shitting on the red a little bit for these first couple episodes. Just so we all get it out of our system from the last couple of years. So yeah. essentially, he's the punching bag for the first few episodes there. A, a little bit, yeah. But I think it's meant to be like we're gonna let we're gonna have all this get out of our system of all this hate on the Reds, so that we can move forward, and this Red can be a good character, and he is. Like he has good moments. He's a good character. He's not an asshole. He's not stupid. Like it works. Anyway. Now. Thirdly, and most importantly, that entire conversation that is the first, like, 30 minutes to an hour, depending on what we're talking about, that we have before we get into talks of the episodes we're watching, and that stuff, we're slicing that out of TGSR, and we're moving that into its own podcast. Hopefully. There's a big hopefully around that right now, because if you know the crux of our talks of that is our talks weekly of writer which by doing this new format we're essentially going to go we're not doing this weekly we're doing this whenever we damn well please <laughs> that way we have like more to talk about in terms of writer stuff and more to talk about on other stuff we watch so it might less like whenever and i think in terms of release it'll go out behind rift tracks like, it, mm -hmm. it will be a Saturday release, too. Yeah. So, it's possible that new stuff may come out between when we record and when it goes out. Just depends. Yeah. <laughs> but, again, the biggest problem with that is Ghost is being absolute garbage. And yeah, I'm super close to dropping it. I am literally, this week's episode, depending on the quality of this week's episode, I am very close to dropping the show for a while. And not watching Ghost. If ever going to be picking up again. Because it's not like I haven't dropped the show this late into the run. I dropped Denno at this same point too. I dropped Denno deep into the 30s. Because I was bored with the show. I have not watched Hibiki since a little ways into the changeover. And that is deep into the 30s as well. So it's not like I don't want to finish Ghost. But I'm not about to sit through 15 plus more episodes of garbage just to say I watched the rest of it. If that is what's going to happen. Like I said, I'm fine with Ghost until I go to think about it and then I hate it. Yep. So it, it's going to depend on can I just be like, you know what, screw the thought process behind this there's not one or not because it, if I can do that mm -hmm. I can make it to the end yep. if not nope I'm probably going to be dropping it with you <laughs> and then it becomes a well what now Yeah. the only thing that the two of us could theoretically be watching at the same time would be Zooger then but you'd have to catch up to me 
Yeah. For us to have that conversation. And unfortunately, Sentai is not, is probably not going to get the same kind of conversation out of us. Not really. Yeah. Of course, there's also a point where I'm like, you know what, maybe we ought to just stomach through Ghost. Because, case in point, we just spent like 30 minutes before we started this ranting about sure. it. Yeah, and I'm sure somebody <laughs> would get entertainment value out of us ranting about it. Shinta is still watching Ghost, and he's always had a problem with Ghost, and always like had a problem with it. It's just... Like, un like, unlike us, he's felt the problems very early on and has been a bit negative about Ghost. It's just gotten worse over time for him. Whereas us, it's like a shock has just happened in the last, like, three episodes have just, like, just stabbed us both in the back. And we're like, the fuck, Ghost? What were you doing? I think it's because we figured they would wind up straightening up by this point. Yeah. Because... We've talked about it. There's been some questionable stuff up to this point, and it's like, this is just that nail in the coffin point where it's like, you guys are just not trying. Yeah. And now it's blatant. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm with you on that. I'm sure someone would find humor in that. Yeah. But again, I, I want to say, if you want to hear, like, a more critical reason why we don't like Ghost, I can honestly say Shinta hits it. It's always been a pacing issue. Ghost doesn't know how to pace itself properly. Shinta's always hit that on the, hit that nail on the head for me in his vlogs. And this past week's analysis of Ghost fucking just hit everything I, I had to say about it. And I'm like, Look! He says it! I agree with him! He says everything I ever want to say about this episode, and how fucking nonsense it is. How Mugen just literally shows up out of nowhere, and literally has nothing to do with what the fuck just happened. How fucking Takaru got revived by memes I don't even begin to know how the fuck work. Especially when one of these characters, for all intents and purposes, has nothing. Has done nothing in this show. Yeah. The other one didn't do anything in this show until last couple of weeks when he finally had an arc focused on him. Two of them are writers, and it fucking one of them's a re on a repeat from Chase. <laughs> Which, might I add, we called that early on. Yep. The other two get to be in the main opening. And have, and one of them's helped, and the other one's tried to be comedy, and has been hit and miss. And the last of them has been useless since she came back to life. Yep. Like this big team moment from them, and I'm like, I don't care. And it's like, okay, I... even even if you try to act as if they all have importance in the show yeah only one of them has importance in the events of this last episode yeah. and it goes even further the only reason Mugen exists is because of Takaru so not even the seven that are there it's like <sighs> like here, here's the thing, spoilers for me again, because we're I'm, we're gonna have, to have this conversation. Fuck it, we're gonna have this conversation yeah. now. Yeah. This is the last time we're gonna have this conversation on TGSR, but fuck it, we're gonna send it out in style. Yeah. All right. Mugen is supposed to be, have seven different emotions attached to it, or it's seven different weapon finishers besides the right the God Rider kick. That By I, the way, the Rider kick is literally called the God Rider kick. That I do believe we actually touched on that in the scans last. Right. Yeah, last Drift Tracks episode. Yeah, because we right. had it so then. If you want to <laughs> know what those emotions were, go back to that episode. Go dig that up that conversation. That conversation where we dug up scans, or go dig up the scans because they're all listed there. All right. If any of those emotions, like if more than like three of those emotions were talked about, were shown at all 
over the course of fucking Ghost. Maybe I care. But that's the problem. Half of those emotions have not existed for those characters that's supposed to be connected to them. Yep. Like, love? Okay, Akairi. Fucking I don't remember the rest of them. I think one of them is Sorrow, and I'm like, okay, Necrom. And that's only because we fucking had, like, everyone die in front of him. <laughs> as it is necessary. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay, I have some serious props for him. Yep. After all of that death happened in front of him, I'm surprised that he's still not evil. Yep. <laughs> Uh, like, I don't even remember the rest of the fucking emotions. I don't remember them right offhand. And what's worse is the show made no point whatsoever to try to tie the emotions to any of them. Yep. No point at all. <laughs> Alright, um, Joy. Onari? Yeah, because he's always happy. Oh, wait, lucky. no, there's a faith one. That's Onari. Ah. He has, he has to be faith because he's the fucking priest. Alright. Love. Akari. I guess. Sadness. Necrom. Fun. Canon? Like, anger is, of course. Makoto. Yeah. But I got Joy, Valiant, and Fun. Um... Um... We got two monks and Canon. I don't know which is which. That's when you just put them into a hat and tell them each to pick one. Right, but there's a problem. Like, some of these can be swapped around, potentially. Uh-huh. I think, like, anger, sadness, and faith are definitive. Love could be canon, because Akari could be shoved into something else, but I don't think that was the point of the showcase. But then again, that goes against the imagery and the implications of uh, Takaru having his first finisher for Mugen being the Naganata one, which is the Joy one, when the main one he was thinking about before he came back to life was Akari. So. Also, why does Akari's one have to be the damn hammer one, which isn't a hammer, because it's only like half a hammer? Uh. Problems. <laughs> anyway. And like I said, it gets more complicated because of the fact that the show doesn't try to do anything with those. There, there's this word called explain. Ghost is really bad at it. They don't explain anything. We literally have to interpret everything. And it's very frustrating after a while because nothing gets confirmed on our interpretations. At all. Like, it's fine if you leave stuff to interpretations. But you can't leave the entire goddamn show to interpretation. You have to give something ground- something has to ground ghosts. Thereby, all interpretations have to go back to this grounding point. It, it's- it's one of those that the biggest problem I'm having with the show is, okay, we've- over the 33 episodes, we've at least found out the reason why the Ganma are on Earth. Yep. And that's to basically take over the planet and change it into another Ganma world. We get that idea. Why? What's wrong with what they've got? Is it uh, gonna destroy itself? Is it... I mean... Because let's, let's be honest here. The bodies didn't start disintegrating until Alan's dickhead of a brother killed their father. Yeah. So what um explanation? <laughs> yeah, here's the thing. <laughs> Alan 
Colin's sister has done dick in all since she's shown up as well. She's walked around and had things explained to her, but that's it. And occasionally said things. Yep. She had her one shot of the fight scene and we didn't even see it. It's like, oh, okay. So I'm guessing she's a badass because she fought off all those people that was after Takaru and Alan. But we didn't see that, so I don't know. Maybe she talked them all down. <sighs> I'm just, we still don't know what the fuck's the deal with her, with her, with his sister. So I'm just like, I, I, nothing is explained in the show, so I don't know what to think about Ghost at the time when it comes to specific characters because I don't know who the fuck they are. We still don't know what, what to, what's the deal with with Sage and the fucking magistrate and what's their connection and how the fuck is it? What is their plan for anything and everything? Okay, we don't know definitive. But let, let's be honest, the memory that Takaru saw, yeah. the dialogue Sage has, we pretty much know that he's the Magistrate too. Yeah. So, and I think it even goes a step further in 33, mm -hmm. because he made a comment about, uh, I'm wanting to say about one of the forms. I'm wanting to say he made a comment about, uh, I can't remember what exactly it was, but something about the forms that both Tucker and Makoto have. It wasn't direct, but it, you could tell it was implied that way. Oh, it was probably Deep Spectre then. And it's like, oh, so you know, okay, huh. Well then. <laughs> yeah, because re reminder, Makoto knows the Magistrate, and I assume that's where he got his belt from. But he's never seen Sage. But Takaru's only seen Sage, but he's never seen the Magistrate, and Takaru got his belt from Sage. And the belts are the same, so... Yeah. Huh. Which, I disagree with on Shinto's uh, interpretation that that prototype belt Sayonji had was... Mako is Makoto's. No, that's the prototype belt that's been in the damn briefcase he's had the entire time until he ended up dead. Yeah, that's... That's his. Yeah. That's the way he was getting, uh, the, icons getting the icons to begin with. Yeah. I assume he fucking handed over the tack and all that stuff and be like, alright, here you go. Here's plans for a belt. Have fun. And they developed... They, they copied... They made, it do, they made another Ghost Driver. That magistrate held on to, but they eventually developed their own thing in the form of the Mega Loader. And the prototype that uh, fucking Igor has. That's it. That's my thought process of where they went. They just duplicated the Ghost Driver, made sure it worked, then they went and did their own thing. And that was Necrom. Yeah. But yeah, I... So yeah, Ghost isn't good, for those wondering, for those wanting an update. This is the last time we're going to be hearing about anything current on TGSR. Because the entire reason we're excising this conversation is so that we can essentially batch record TGSR. So we can just go back to back on episodes and essentially have TGSR prepped and ready in advance. Hopefully. As it's, as it's like... The only thing that we don't live stream that we do record weekly, I think, for the most part. Yeah. Like, this was the last thing that we recorded weekly that we didn't stream. Yeah. So, once we put this on a batch recording basis, the only things that are weekly now are what we stream. Which I think is actually a good thing. Yeah, because no editing involved in those. Nope. <laughs> when we screw up live, we screw up in that recording too. Yep. <laughs> Which, ironically, we haven't had that much screwing up. Luck, I guess. I don't know. Either that or we're finally getting better. No, it's luck. Yeah. <laughs> 
I was about to say, if you wanted, if I, if I wanted to, if I wanted to feel like, if I wanted to actually test my luck, I would have went and played poker today. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I did. I got invited to a poker game like earlier today, or for earlier today, but I didn't go. So I was like, I'm just gonna lose money because I don't play poker that often, and I'm playing against people who do play poker often, so I'm just fucked. <laughs> Every time I played poker with them, I lost, so Ooh. I ain't losing money. Yeah. That's never good. No. <laughs> I'm a college student. I gotta save money. Yeah, only gamble on stuff you know you can win. Yeah. <laughs> uh. So yeah. TSR, batch recording, no within reason episode limits, and random picks whenever we feel like it is the gist of this new season going forward. So, that's going to take us to double. The show that started this theoretical new era of writer that has existed since then. I say theoretical because it's technically just part two of the Heisei era. It's just everything for going forward from double has a lot of has a lot of things in common and a lot of commonalities and a lot of crossovers with that material and it actually works and stuff so yeah we're essentially going to be covering the entirety of Comrade Double all 49 episodes of it and we're going to start today with the first two episodes which stupid me I forgot to get the episode list up before I entered this and by the way, I do believe this is technically the second time for us yeah. watching these two episodes yes, on the we... show. I, yeah, I need but... to specify that. Because I seem to recall the last time that I watched three, I rewatched the first two episodes. So this will be the third time for me. And probably for you too. Oh, fourth. Like fourth or fifth. I don't fucking know. <laughs> I haven't I've haven't rewatched really Double in quite some time. Uh... But anyway, we're watching the first two episodes today The W Search, the detec Two Detectives in One, and The W, w Search, Those Who Make This City Grieve. I'm using the Wikipedia translations for this. I'm not about to dig through the fucking the episode, the videos of the episode, the fucking episode titles. They're close enough. This is what we're looking at here, folks. So yeah. So if you go back into the TJSR catalog, which God knows if these uh, the far original ripping of this even exists on the YouTube at the moment. I don't know. It uh, might. I don't. I don't remember. I know a lot of our old TJSR stuff is not on YouTube, but I don't know how far back TGSR goes on YouTube. I know how far back TGS goes, but not TGSR. Oh, shit. Actually, on the YouTube, this will be the first. Well, here you go, folks. Our first look at <laughs> our, our fucking fifth look at that. Because <laughs> season one and two is when we touch the first four episodes. Well... Well, wow. and those aren't on YouTube because I still have yet to finish them to get them up there. Yeah. I'll be watching the TV Han subs, hard copies on my end. Tommy, what, what are you watching them? How are you watching these? The link in the description below. Which are in fact also there. <laughs> yeah. Which are in fact also TV Han sub. So. There you go. You can also download these at tvnihon.com. Or through that site, I believe. I think they've got the yeah. download links. You have to register for an account to download. Ah. But you can just, just go to tvnihon and download them, because you can get batch downloads and get, like, all the episodes in one go. And movies, too. Uh, oh, one last mention. There are no finales. We'll just have a in discussion about the show as a separate recording and we'll just put that out as necessary 
if we have a fina if we have anything finale like, it's just we're gonna watch whatever material we haven't watched of said content. Which unfortunately for double means the double returns movies at this point. Cause we've seen Movie War 2010. You probably need to at least start watching O's if you wanna watch Movie War Core. We've watched A to Z. You can't watch Mega Max without seeing through the entirety of O's. And you also can't watch uh, Ultimatum without watching the entirety of Forza. So. Yeah. And that's all of the double movies, essentially. And yes, I'm counting Mega Max and Ultimatum as double movies, even though Shotaro and Philip don't show up for Ultimatum. Only Edgy shows up for Ultimatum. But I still count it as a double movie because it's just a continuation of the team up stuff from Mega Max. So I'm just gonna just gonna accept that. Anyway, how are we feeling going into double again for the both of us? Honestly. Uh I'm going in kinda happy. Cause at least this will be a good rider show. Yes. Because <laughs> God knows Ghost is not being it. Yeah. <laughs> just, just to be upfront, we've both seen the entirety of Double. Yes. Nothing's surprising us here. Granted, I well, haven't seen Double. I don't think I've seen Double in its entirety since I originally watched the show a few years ago. Well, and I, I'm going to say this. Nothing from nothing from the main viewer standpoint is going to surprise us. Mm -hmm. We might see something in the background or recognize different locations or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> but play that play that location bingo. Just being like, ah, oh, this one, this one, this one. Uh. Yeah, I my original watch of Double wasn't through. Uh, it was through, like, a site like uh, Kiss Asian, which is what's linked down below. Except, the website I was watching it on, I watched it in, like, two episode bursts, two, three episode bursts every day, because the website limited how long you could watch material for. Oh. Uh, that's kind of dumb. Yep! But it forced me to pace double and not fucking binge watch this shit because you know what got me into writer to begin with what actually it's someone I mentioned to you on Twitter I mentioned to you I was talking about on Twitter it's actually Evangelist on YouTube he was the one that got me into writer because of one specific review of his and that was on the SA Trader Arts Kamen Rider Skull and Kamen Rider Joker that's how I found out about writer to begin with because I, I watched his videos for a long time once I first discovered him. And I discovered him because of Transformer stuff. That's how I discovered Vangelis on YouTube. So when I saw his review for writer material, which, weirdly enough, was because it was on Channel Awesome. And I just found it randomly. <laughs> so I watched those. Always knew about this writer TV show thing that he mentioned was a part was connected to these toys and so eventually one day I think it was the summer before I started at the community college I sat down and watched all that and I binge watched the fuck out of it <laughs> in three episode first per day and eventually finished double and then weirdly enough watched the like the second and third halves or second and third thirds of movie war 2010 for the double portions and the crossover portions because i was like i don't know what the fuck this decade shit is i'm not gonna watch it because apparently it's the ending of the series so i'm just gonna skip through this now watch through double i watched through part of those and then i watched the entirety of decade because i stopped after a point in those because i was a little bit bored with the show so i moved on the decade watched the entirety of decade what rewatched movie war 2010 again to, for the full context of the movie and then started to move forward from there and work backwards. And that's 
when you started. Like, if you follow, have been following us all five years, that's when uh, you got my intermissions about me talking about Blade and other stuff. So, yeah. This is what started my love for Ryder. And also what got me back into Tokusatsu because I was a Power Rangers fan back in the day. I loved Power Rangers. The last show I watched for Power Rangers that I liked was RPM. And that was a few years before this. Or, yeah, that was a few years before I discovered Double. So, it kind of reignited an old love for me. So, I have a very hard soft spot for Double. I might admit mistakes, but I refuse to let it not be a favorite of mine. Even if Gaim is a better show. And it is. <laughs> it is a better show, and I admit that. But I refuse to let Double not be a good show, in my opinion. Despite all, despite any type of failure it might have. So, yeah. If I have a bias, that's why. Alright. You, you ready? Yep. Alright. Let's get started here with uh, taking a look at the... Go ahead. Alright. Take a look at the first episode of Double here in 3, 2, 1, go. Literally, after I said that, I thought my mouse was over there, and it just wasn't. Oh. <laughs> That's why I was like, I oh, lost my mouse. Oh, thank you, video. Wait, that might not have been me. Oh, what happened? Well, that's weird. What? The audio glitched out. Hmm. Huh. That is, that is still a weird thing to do, effects-wise. For someone getting shot in the back is for those spark effects. It still feels kind of weird that they that Suichi is in Narumi Suichi is silhouetted this entire time. You don't see his face, which makes me wonder if they casted him before for this first episode, or casted the guy that would become him in the movie. Because it looks like him, but I don't think it is. Because they did the same thing in A to Z. Because I don't think that's Narumi Sokichi's normal actor in A to Z. You know what I think might have happened? What? I think my browser might have glitched it out for whatever reason. That's still very odd. Also, I will say, this is one of the most interesting ways. I think this is probably one of the best first few minutes we've gotten for Ryder in the last few years. Just this very, like, you're not sure what the context of this is, but it looks fucking awesome. Moments. And to be honest, you don't get an explanation for all this shit until Movie War 2010 with Begins Night. Like, you don't get the full story here until Begins Night. By the way, I was right. Somehow, my browser glitched it out, so we will pause after the, uh, oh, opening, after the opening, and I will fix it. Mm, I missed this opening. Let me know what time code it is. 328. 
I was uh, waiting until after the commercial buffer as well. Yeah, I figured you were. Uh, I don't understand why that happened, but... Uh, tech does oh, well. weird things because tech just does weird things. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> Y'all set? <laughs> Hold on. Did they do it again? No. Uh, apparently, when it tells you what time code it's supposed to be on, it ain't always right. Oh. <laughs> well. So I go back what should be one second, because I was off a second, and it goes back four. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Well. But now I'm ready. All right. Picking it up from the 328 time code marker in three, two, one, go. Wait, that was a year before the series started? What? I didn't realize that. Huh. I didn't realize it was like a year before the series started. I, I thought it was just like a few months before then. So that means those two were operating as double for like an entire year before the show started. Uh, not uh, so true in very terrible at. <laughs> I love how she's just ignoring him. Yep. <laughs> Strange detective wannabe, god damn it. <laughs> He's he's dead. <laughs> Granted, we have no idea where we buried his body, but he's dead. <laughs> Oh, and because of the show, I've realized fucking I like jazz music. Like anything with a jazzy feel to it. So, damn it. Damn you for introducing me to a genre of music I never thought I'd actually like. <laughs> I have an entire soundtrack of the fucking Air Force's jazz band. Which, by the way, the U.S. Air Force has their own jazz band. I didn't know that, actually. Yeah, they went and perform. They were performing at my community college. Oh, huh. really good. <laughs> Which, really enough, the uh, one of their people couldn't make it to the show, so they had a uh, somebody from the army fill in for them. Which I guess means that the army also has a jazz band. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> well then. Yeah, they're really good. And I, I was just like, wow. 
course, they, they perform in uniform, too. Which I'm like, hopefully those aren't thick, because that's a lot of heat you have to deal with on stage. God damn. I forgot how good these two were together. <laughs> Which Riku Sanja uh, recently, uh, I forgot, I think it was on Twitter. Someone brought up that uh, from the past couple of writer shows uh, Riku Sanja has been a part of, they've had this realization that Riku Sanjo deals like, is a better writer if you have a very small main cast. Like, he's really good, I think her. She's really good here in double because she only has like four people to write for every week. Yeah, everyone else is just kind of in and out. Yeah. But with Forza, she has like seven, eight people she has to write for on a weekly basis and that she just can't handle that. Like people get defocused a lot in uh, Forza. Huh. Uh, I forgot what else she wrote for. Also, I think the first and last time we ever hear about the people who make Shotaro's hats. That that's a very awkwardly shaped camera. I mean, it's supposed to be a bat, I know, but it, it's still a bit awkward to look. It looks awkward to hold. Although I do have to wonder what's the resolution on that. <laughs> it's not got that good of a. It got that got, got that big of a lens, so it can't have that good of a resolution. Can smack him again. There you go. Well, he didn't exactly have time to explain. <laughs> Still working out the kinks on that spider watch. Ah, uh, the cat. The, the only innocent one in the room.
Did you, did you need to transform and say that? But that, that seemed unnecessary. But you need to elaborate the point. <laughs> Just random muttering for Philip, even though you can kind of actually hear what he's saying. With music in the background? <laughs> Just putting it blunt there. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Let's see where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Philip just keeps going and going and going. He can't be stopped. It's like the Energizer Rabbit. Yeah. You know, that, that is such a simple effect, but it works. Yeah. Just just underlight him with light and just put him on a green screen. You know, I have to wonder if they if they ever put their script in the book. Or if Philip ever put his script in the book, considering, like, most of the time you can't see the book. Honestly, I could see that. <laughs> of 
or or at the least have like sticky notes or something. Yeah. I mean, it's a blank book. It's not like there's anything supposed to be in the book to begin with, so. Yeah. Like I said, most of the time it's shot to where you can't see inside the book to begin with. Well, and I mean, for that matter, if it was, like, wrote on a certain page, all they'd have to do is any shots like that, make sure it was on a different page. Yeah. Because it looks like it's a completely blank book. Mm-hmm. You know, good sir, you're not supposed to do that in public, right? Yep. <laughs> it's very rude. And you're definitely not supposed to burn his hat. Yeah. I, I like that little musical build up to just the silence. Yeah. Like that. Mm, such good little things right there. <laughs> To be fair, you didn't ask about this. <laughs> Probably should have asked about that. Now, I'll be honest. I can't tell the difference between the uh, the newly announced renewal for double and the like the current figure arts double you can pick up. Oh, really? Yeah, the problem is there's not like a, these two are actually sitting next to each other, or standing next to each other, side-by-side -side photo like Kuga was. So it's a little hard for me to really spot the difference. I mean, they took out the, uh, the black joint part at the elbow on the Cyclone side, which was a big oops on their part for the original double figure. But like outside that, I I honestly can't tell the difference. In this, someone's edited together like a side by side of the two figures, but like the crest doesn't look as huge. But that's not a huge deal. I think the crest mass shifts sometimes. Yeah, there's times where I think it does. Yeah, and I have to wonder if it's because of the different suits. Like maybe they didn't keep the same scale for whatever reason. Well, I think it's also because like. If the crest is so big for action shots and for, for the action stuff, they shrink it down so it doesn't like snap off mid fight scene. Or at least that's my thought. Now uh, it's kind of the same reason they like shrink the drive driver and I think the ghost driver, why that mass shifts all the time and you can spot it. Like, they, they do that for the action stuff and nothing more. Oh, the CG. The fucking CG. Yeah. Oh. Hard CG. Yeah, it doesn't look good. Also, don't ask me why the fucking Revolve Gary was in fucking GP. <laughs> yeah, the Revolve Gary was Double's vehicle in GP. Even though that's not how the Revolve Gary works. 
Uh. Yeah, I will say, since they're doing a renewal double, which I figured they were going to do a renewal double, they have, like, all the easy repaints in the world to do off of that. Because they can do the rest of the doubles forms and almost do Fang Joker off of it. Yeah. Maybe the only, the, only, the only problem with Fang Joker is that they have to do, I think, a few new parts on it. I know at least the the shoulder pads and a helmet. If I'm remembering the suit in my head right. Like, that's the main two things they have to do new parts-wise. Hmm. Outside of the obvious. But, like, it's the same base body. So there's no problem with that. Oh. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Shin Kenger was the show. Yep. Shin Kenger was in the process of wrapping up when uh, Double premiered. Yeah. And then we got in the Ghost Ager, and Ghost Ager was fucking garbage. <laughs> yeah. Shin Kenger was good. I've seen the entirety of Shin Kenger. It's actually a pretty good show. All right, I don't know why the window was super small to begin with. What, you didn't like it being super small? The size of a GBA screen? Well, I mean... That would work. Anyway, got episode two up and ready to roll? Uh, yes. All right. Kicking off episode two here in three, two, one, go. For those who missed the, the plot from, like, 20 minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, they can do all the double repaints, which, like, they've done one repaint with the Kuga renewal for Rising Mighty, but they haven't done anything else. I'm surprised they haven't done anything with the Hibiki, since you could theoretically use some of it as the basis for, like, any other Hibiki writers. Theoretically speaking. That that is not very T Rexy of you saying. You, you're was, not supposed to burr underground. And that was not smooth CGing either. Oh no, it's not. Granted, writers never had the best CG. Yeah, it's like even if you hadn't have told me that the Mugen in the last episode of Ghost was CG, I still could have told you that was. Yeah, it, it, felt like I was looking at the Galba Rising footage. For and, me. and that's something that's current kind of deal. Yeah. It's just they've never had good luck with that. I mean, hell, it's been... This is seven years ago at this point? Yep. Fucking Christ. <laughs> Jesus. Makes me realize how long I've been watching Ryder, because I, I, I was I think O's was in the middle of its run when I was watching Double in its entirety. So, yeah. I've been mm. watching Ryder for, like, six years now. <laughs> Fuck. Well, he explained to you the whole no pont thing.
Hey, she said please. You know, that's one of the only times someone's ended up dead in double. Like, normally dead. Yeah. Damn. Oh, God, I forgot about that. I'm skimming through my Tumblr at the moment. Oh. I forgot that uh, SIC confirmed what the Final Form ride for O's would have been. Or they did a Final Form ride for O's for Decade. Hmm. Essentially, turns O's into a set of armor for Decade to wear. I'll put it this way. It's better than all of the Final Form rides in the goddamn series. Kind of. At least doesn't repeat powers Decade already has, or is supposed to have. You have a very large head, good sir. You're very quick for having such a large ass head. Wow, were you actually putting the stock in that Halo Wars 2 image that leaked? <laughs> Weirdly enough, it reminds me of like what was theoretically supposed to be Halo Wars 2, or at least the, the DLC for Halo Wars. Huh. It's supposed to be a, a brute campaign. And this looks like this might be a brute campaign.
Yep. That's why he thought that. Mm-hmm. Philip, you can you can say that less with a smile. <laughs> I only wanted to say it the way he did, just to screw with him, though. True. Mm -hmm. And boonk. <laughs> to, to be fair, Half World is, is Shotaro through and through. Yep. As much as he wants to deny it, that is who he is. <laughs> Well, it's his form of hard-boiled. I will say, this is one thing we haven't gotten since level. A real emphasis on the location of the city. Or location of the show. Yeah. I kind of miss that. You know, they, they could have turned down the head a bit. They, they didn't need that huge ass head. They could have, but what would be the fun in that? To be fair, she is your boss now, whether you like it or not. Yep.
<laughs> it's a bit messed up. You're not asking enough questions. That's the problem here. <laughs> That's always your problem. You don't ask enough questions. Well, who the fuck else is he going to ask? Yeah, you're only carrying dead white with you, but run. <laughs> Well, at least she was smart enough to think, oh, I'm going to get him in the car and then drive away. Oh, oh, wait. Didn't think about the keys. There's even keys in there. Also, that is the first time I think we've had a repeat location. For like three seconds. <laughs> from the right angle. Yeah. Oh shit, there is a key in there. <laughs> yeah, except for it won't do any good. Nope. <laughs> don't we have don't we love how leisurely we're we're, we're moving here? <laughs> I'd ask them why there are windmills there, but it's fucking Futo. There's windmills everywhere. The whole point of the damn city. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to be fair, she has the point of um, how the fuck am I getting Philip on there? Uh, you could undo your seatbelt first. Still buckled. Yep. I guess it's a good thing Philip is in some compartment in there that they, they ain't gotta worry about. Because mm -hmm. he did just throw him in there. Yeah. Yeah, because that could have been bad. Yep. Of course, they treat his body like a rag doll. You have to kind of wonder if he's ever sore when they get finished. I have to think in 49 episodes, they did it once. If not, I'm disappointed. Just like I'm disappointed they never did a body swap episode with fucking Tamari and Buckle. Mm -hmm. Even though they did have the perfect way to do that. Yep, after that Strider had the perfect setup to do a body swap episode. Nope, not gonna do it. Well, I was about to say, what the fuck else would you use?
In case you're wondering, this is why Philip stays at the office when we do this shit. <laughs> because of situations like this. Is there any reason he has to be butt-ass naked for this? This seems a bit unnecessary. Yeah, it kind of does. Yep. So we brought up a good point of how the fuck Shotaro does his filing system, considering he types everything out. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Like I have like I assume writing Japanese on a typewriter is not the easiest of skills, considering that's not how Japanese is traditionally written. Oh yeah, the the one time they hinted at Philip's family early in the show, and then bring it up, then bring it up until like late. Yeah, forgot about that. You know, if you don't watch these live, you don't really get these outside of like the first couple episodes for subgroups. Not, not that I have a problem with it, I'm just saying, it's like, if, if you wanted more of those, you gotta watch it weekly, live. Anyway, how'd you feel? Uh, getting back in the bubble. Uh, good. It, it, yeah. There's minor things, but it, I think everything that we could say anything bad about it, it's more boiled down to technical limitation. Yeah. That apparently still exists. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, the yeah. Budget, the, the writer budget isn't exactly the strongest of budgets. <laughs> uh, what can you expect, though? Yeah. To be fair, even outside of writer, when you take a show that mixes real life and CGI and that never works. It yeah. always looks kind of phoned in. Which, that's what's funny. We can have video games that look so realistic it's pathetic, but we can't get CGI to blend with realistic stuff to save our lives. Yeah... That's because you have to dump a lot of money to get it right. Like, a lot of money to get it right. Uh, so, it's not exactly the, the easiest thing to pull off. But anyway. Yeah, th th this was a great... Just romp back in the double, and knowing we're going back through the entire series makes me go... Uh, this is gonna make me rewatch everything going forward. Because I feel like there are like swaths of O's that I just don't remember, and I'm like, fuck, I should rewatch O's, because I don't remember like half of it. Fuck. Well, heck, let's just 
go all the way through us and Forza. I would say just go and catch up, but seeing as how we did do a season on Wizard that I know is on YouTube, it's like, yeah, that one's got to be out not of the only, question. Not only have we done a season on Wizard, we are we we've been weekly talking about Ryder from like Gaim onward. Yeah. So it's not like people don't know the, how we feel about Gaim Drive and now Ghost. Yeah. But you know we could go through Gaim and Drive. No, this I took out Ghost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If we make it through the one time of watching it, then it might be on the table, but as it currently stands now. Yeah. <laughs> Which is sad because I've liked Ryder from Double Onward for the most part. Like, some shows were weaker than others, but overall, I've enjoyed all of them. And Ghost is the first time that I'm like, this show is not good. <laughs> and I can't really defend it. Yeah, there's not... That's what's bad. We've had this discussion, too. Yeah. But, uh... There's not really any definitive reason why ghosts should be suffering. There's not. Mm hmm That's what's the bad thing. It's like, I could defend it if there was another big reason as to why it's suffering. Mm hmm But there's not. And it's like, ugh. Yeah. And, wow. and I, I have a funny feeling because I already see it, but um, I have a funny feeling by the end of this season of Rift Tracks, we're going to be able to be like, wow, that's a big contrast between Double and Ghost. How how far we have come in all these years. <laughs> So yeah, I guess that will do it. So next week, we're going to be keeping up with... Let me do that again. Words. Not working. Next week. Next week, we're going to keep watching Double. We're going to go into the money arc. I'm just going to name them by the the uh, Dopon. So that's the, the easiest way to call it until we hit like late Double where it's like... This is all one arc. I got nothing. <laughs> I know that happens in Double Late, where it's just like, yeah, we're kind of dropping the two episode arc thing, kind of, sort of. Everything's kind of just blends. But for now, it's a very hard two episode arc. But anyway, that'll do it for. Wrap it up, Slum. Um, Peacebreaker2448 saying, yeah, everybody, we'll see you next. Uh, next. Round the game suit rift tracks. God, I, I, I don't know where I'm at. Damn, tonight. Anyway, <laughs> peace out. Don't forget to check out the links in the top and the bottom and the other shows in the annotations. Also, for those on mobile, all the links are in the description below. Till next time.